Hey, hello again, it's Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. Many questions go through our minds on a daily basis. And we look for answers to those questions. Many of us will think about it, but we won't dig in. We won't get our books out. We won't get in our books. We won't take the time of day to step away from the television or radio or whatever's going on and just get a book and uh, just lay it out and find a place where you can see it decent read it and get to looking at it and get to studying it and as you do you can grow in the Lord and you can grow in fellowship with God while you're studying a book about him and his ways it's very important and uh, why does God a, a, a loving God, why does he allow bad things to happen or permit bad things to happen to what would be seemingly good people? Uh, you say, well, uh, my grandmother and my grandfather, my grandfather has uh, many problems. So why would God allow that? And my grandfather, he's been a good man. He tended his cows. He just didn't mind his own business. He, he's done good through his life and he's why is he sick now? Why has he got these problems? And you say, why? And, and why does he have pain? And you know, there, <clears throat> because he's human. Because we're human, we're going to go through what humans go through. Be it a Christian or a lost person. You are going to go through what humans go through in this body, in this day. We're only promised 70 years and our body wears out and a man might be better off who is saved who is a Christian at, at 70 years to go on to heaven and be there with the Lord but those that are left behind have a problem with that and of course the man that's going on has a problem with it right now too he says, well I, I want to spend some time with my grandchildren I want to do some things well, I'm coming to the age. I'm 70 now, and I'm on my way out. But I, I enjoy my grandchildren more now than I ever did. Now they're getting to be college age, and everything, they're on my heart. I'd like to help them go to college. I'd like to be the granddad that helps them go to college. And I'm and, and hoping to be that granddad. Now, <clears throat> the problem with pain is uh, cancer are suffering in many ways that Christians and non-Christians have it is because this physical body is breaking down. But the Lord said over here in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, He said, You may go through this pain, but I'm going to make a way of escape to you. It won't be more than you can bear. Now let me tell you a little story. I had a kidney stone. And that kidney stone hit me. <clears throat> I was coming through a little bit of town, down the road from where I live. Had a little bit of hospital in it at the time. And uh, I ended up in that little hospital. And the nurse came in, and I got talking to her about the Lord. And come to find out, she was backslidden, and had a lot of problems and everything. And we prayed about it, talked with her, and she got right with the Lord. And, and st started out on the right path. And then... The man that uh, cleaned the floors, we, he and I had a conversation, and he got right. And then the doctor, who was a foreign doctor at the time, the next day he came in, he closed the door, and he sat on the bed, and he said, tell me about this Jesus you're telling everybody about. And I told him, and uh, do you know, I didn't know it, but that man was on his deathbed. And I was sent over there with a kidney stone for a clock in the morning, to be able to witness and work with those three people and I went through a kidney stone suffering but it was worth every second of it for what God had me do and now he sent me over there in a funny way but that's the way he sent me over there and that was good now he's going to make a way through the problem now how you handle a problem is how your testimony is going to look if you have cancer, I had a good friend, lady friend, she had cancer, and that cancer began to eat her up, and she smiled, 
and she praised the Lord. And she went all the way to the end of the deal. And then one day the doctor said to her, your lungs are going to fill with fluid and you're going to die if we don't put you on a machine. She said, I don't want to lay here on a machine. And my family doesn't want me to lay here on a machine. And I'm not going to lay here on a machine. So how long do I have to live? And he said, well, you'll live 12, 15 hours. And then you'll die in, in, in fairly peaceably. And she did. She laid there and she talked with everybody. And, and she was right up to the last minute. And she died fairly peaceably. She drowned in her own fluid that filled her lungs up. And that can happen. And so now, here, we have a Christian lady dying with peace of God, knowing she's going to heaven, and she's got the peace of God, even though she had cancer for a long time and died with it. Now, we're all born with cancer. We're all born decaying. The thing about it is, is we live in a world today where we trigger our bodies at younger and younger ages to, for that cancer to spring up. How do we do that? We trigger by, uh, in the morning, instead of a glass of milk, we get up and have a, a, a soft drink, what you call a soft drink, carbonated drink. Well, that carbonated drink, believe it or not, is probably one of the worst things you could possibly put in your body. But you do it anyway. And not only is it a cup full of sugar, the carbonation is not good for your bloodstream, your system, for everything else. So now you've taken off in the morning, you've drank a, a soft drink, you've not put any food in your stomach, you've not treated your body like you should have. Now you get down there and there work, and you uh, stop at a fast food place, and you pump one of those sausage biscuits that's nothing but grease, and, and as far as the real meat goes or anything, I, I doubt seriously if you even get a piece of meat in most of them today. I don't care what their name is, how big their name up the scale is. If you get a piece of meat at all, you're going to do good because you don't know whether it's meat or not anymore. And if you do, you get meat that's been shot with all kinds of hygiene and stuff to make up, either make a cow grow fast or a chicken grow fast or, or an egg grow or or whatever you eat today, most food today is dangerous. It's dangerous for you, and it's dangerous for your system. And that's why we end up with <clears throat> all blowed out of shape, with great big bellies on us, hanging over our belt, and uh, we look like we need to go on a, a six-month diet and not eat anything. And that's because we've allowed a fat system to enter our system that we've cultivated over the years and now when we're 35 40 years old we ended up going to the doctor we have hypertension we have all kinds of problems why because we didn't follow the recipe you know God gave us a recipe in the Bible yes he did when the sheep came down to Peter God blessed everything he said you can eat everything if you want to but eating everything is not the best thing they have a thing out here today called a, a blood. Uh, according to your blood, you should find out what's, what your blood is. And then when you find out what your blood is, find out what kind of foods trigger healthy blood, that particular one. If you're A positive, or B positive, whatever you are, find out what kind of foods that blood requires. And when you find it out, eat those kind of foods Stay away from those that are bad for your blood system and be healthy. It's, it's simple, very simple. And it can be godly. Not just simple, but godly. And you can, you can look good and be godly and you can be healthy. And, and God will bless you and he'll bless your work. He'll bless your life. My mom is 94, doesn't take any pills. I'm 70, I don't have to take any pills. God will bless you if you follow him as to the best of your ability. And I'm working on that. I am really working on that. Why don't you try working on that too?
See ya.